Unlike most of the leading African nations, Egypt's national team is predominantly made up of players from a strong local league, more than professionals abroad. That's why the Chan would have been a relatively easy route for Egypt, but it was not the case. The Egypt team coach, Hani Ramzi, faced several challenges during qualifications. The coach discovered that the team is not receiving the proper attention from the FA. For example, there were no high-quality friendlies of football camps to prepare the players, as well as teams like Zamalek's chairman, Murtada Mansour, refused to allow their players to join. Being neglected, the coach resigned and youth team manager Hamada Sedki took over. This change of management in between games led to instability and the new coach couldn't improve the performances. The team naturally failed to qualify. The Football Association, not the managers, received the blame for the loss. The president of the Football Association, Hani Abu Reida, has assembled the team because the CAF has requested so. It was a favor to CAF and a financial benefit as sponsors wanted more games from national teams. They didn't care about the technical side of the team. Moreover, the media didn't give the competition much attention. The problem might not be in the Chan itself, but in its timing. Egypt is more interested in the World Cup qualifiers taking place at the same time. Egypt is close to making it through to Russia 2018 for the first time since 1990. Yas Hakim for CGTN, Cairo. For more on the 2018 African Nations Championship, we're joined in studio by Arnold Kanyangonda, a sports consultant. Arnold, thank you for your time tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So can Kenya maintain its position as host? And if yes, what will it take? Well, I'll give you the same answer I gave uh, when I was asked this question in another studio in February last year. As soon as the hosting was given, no, they can't. Uh, because you need a minimum of three to four years to prepare for this kind of competition. The competition is in January. Um, we are in September and October is fast approaching. In short answer, no, they can't because you need to build new stadia. You need to have the pitches ready and it's, I just don't see it happening. It's a, it's, it's a big ask and I think the sooner that this is let go of and, they let, and Kenya let somebody else host the event, the better. Mm -hmm. Is the president of CAF taking away hosting rights due to unpreparedness? That's all it is. Really, that's all it is. And the unpreparedness is not in terms of Kenya's ability to host a lot of countries. I mean, we saw Kenya hosting the World Under-18 Championships easily. Uh, sports tournaments and other major events take place here all the time. The problem is Kenya does not have this stadium. The last time a new stadium was built in Kenya was 31 years ago, and it opened 30 years ago. So in 30 years, not a single new either general purpose stadium or, or soccer specific stadium that come, comes up to just even calf standards has been built and so you can, might have the best roads, you might have a great airport, you might have good hotels and Kenya has all of those. But if you do not have stadia, either in the capital or one, or one of the two cities outside, then there's no way that is happening. Mm -hmm. So in the event then that Kenya cannot be host, who are waiting in the wings to take up that position? Um, the word is that there are two. There are two countries waiting in the wings. I'm not so sure about the second one, though there's a huge rumor that that's going to be uh, Egypt, uh, Ethiopia, excuse me. The main country, though, that looks almost set to do this is Morocco, because while Kenya is struggling, Morocco already has um, a development plan in terms of planning to host, because remember, they want to host the 2026 World Cup. And so the first step for them would be Chan 2018, um, there is also word that they might be they are sitting in the wings for Afcon 2019 because Kenya is not the only unprepared country. Cameroon is not prepared, especially now with the expanded African Cup of Nations. And so, if I was to put any money on it, if I was a betting man, my money would be on Morocco. They are ready now to host Chan. Kenya won't be ready this time next year to host Chan. That's the unfortunate truth. But Ethiopia, how prepared are they? Ooh, um, I went there uh, last year and the year before last year. In 2015, I was there for the Sekafa Senior Challenge, the last time that was held. And they have some amazing stadia. One of the, one of the cities where the tournament was played was Hawassa. They were redoing the airport then, that's done now. The stadium where the games of the 2015 Sekafa Senior Challenge took place was unfinished. But it looked better than anything Kenya has now. It looked better than Nyayo Stadium. It looked better than Kasarani. Now, they've finished that stadium. They've finished four other stadia. And the jewel in the crown of the Ethiopian football renaissance is um, the new national stadium they're building in Addis Ababa. I passed by it last year in August. It was already a significant part of the way through. 
they don't need that to host China. They already have other stadiums, but Ethiopia, neighbors to the north of Kenya, are looking really, really good in terms of hosting. They've got six ready stadia now to host it. Whereas Kenya, the two that Kenya has are not ready and might not be ready in time for the tournament. Mm -hmm. And so my bet would be either Ethiopia, but almost certainly Morocco. Mm -hmm. Some lessons for Kenya to learn from Ethiopia. So does Jan really play a big role in the African football development? Because big footballing nations seem to not be keen in this tournament. Well, you have to understand that the big, the, the so-called big footballing nations, they are big because their best players play outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. And the reason this tournament was started in the first place was so that players based within Africa could get the chance to also play in a continental competition. You realize that for Senegal, every single member of their 23-man AFCON squad is based, in a, is based abroad. If you look at a team like Algeria, for example, 16 of the team that played for Algeria in the last World Cup were not even born in Algeria. They were born in France, based in France, but of course of Algerian descent. And if you look at Kenya's best players, when the national team is called, half of the squad doesn't play in Kenya. And mm. so the idea for the tournament was give local-based players, give players playing within the con their countries um, a chance to participate in a continental competition. Now, I'm a big fan of Chan, but it is not without its critics. People say it's a waste of resources. People say it comes in the middle of the calendar for some of the countries. There's a huge movement right now that, of people that want to scrap it. But the one argument I've heard that makes sense to me is that if it's the championship of African nations, then instead of insisting that Kenya's squad has to be entirely based in Kenya or that South Africa's squad has to be South African based, the idea that's out there that makes sense to me is for as long as the player plays within Africa, then let him play in Chan. And mm -hmm. it looks like as SCAF is trying new things, as the government, as the administration of Ahmad is trying new things, that might be one of the things they look at uh, in terms of rejigging Chan, rejuvenating Chan, the idea that so long as you're playing on the continent, then you're allowed to play in the Championship of African Nations. Mm, good insights, Arnold. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for your time. Thank you very much. We had in studio tonight, Arnold Kanyangonda.